Alrighty, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Tyler Crates YouTube channel. My name is Tyler. I hope you all are having a blessed day. I already filmed the start of this video once, but I wasn't quite feeling it. So we're going to do it again. Uh, we're going to be upgrading the solar today. And we're going to talk about it and upgrade it. And... Alrighty, so I got this stuff off Marketplace for $300. It was two Renogy 100 watt panels, two deep cycle golf cart batteries that are US battery golf cart batteries. I'm going to show you all of this, and charge controlling stuff, like a charge controller, it's a PWM still, it's not an MPPT, but it'll do, um, and solar wiring, and things like that, but we're going to jump right into it, we're going to kind of talk about what's going on, what, what issues I've had, and other stuff, so currently right now, in here, this is my truck camper, kind of storage right now, but I use it as my little office area here, uh, I have my desktop um, computer, and a TV monitor, uh, and I run things like a fan, another fan. Uh, I also charge my phone in here and do other various things. Um, the issue with this is, and I'm going to show you it obviously, I currently have two hand-me-down free starting batteries um, that are Les Schwab batteries. Uh, if you don't know, starting batteries are for like starting cars. They're not intended for solar use, they're not intended for like high draw extended high draw use um so they're just free got them from a, a friend and they're super old one of them's 2020 and one of them's 2017 so they're end of life starting batteries currently those batteries have about 20 to 30 amp hours of usable power so they actually have probably 40 amp hours but with lead acid you're only able to draw them down to 50 percent to prolong the longevity of them um, so they don't last very long. Uh, and I also have a hundred watt eco worthy solar panel. My idea with this was, was to do a solar setup on the cheap, 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 like really cheap. And the solar setup that I have is very, like it's almost bottom of the barrel cheap as you can get. So uh, I want to kind of talk about why it doesn't work here though. Uh, let's say this AC wire right here. This is standard house wiring was uh, opened up and I could get to these a clamp meter you clamp this clamp around one of the leads so your ground or your positive lead uh, and it measures the amps flowing through that the issue is uh, AC clamp meters are different than DC so you can't use an AC clamp meter to measure DC amps DC clamp meters are very very expensive I want to say they're like 300 plus dollars 200 plus um, for the good ones so this setup here, uh, I have measured it. I, I can't quite remember what it uses here. Uh, on the super eco power mode for the monitor and the desktop, I want to say it uses around either, it's between one and four a, uh, AC amps. Now, if you go over here, which this is the solar setup in here, this is super easy and kind of janky, but it works. Uh, that is my PC vent fan. If you don't know, you need to vent uh, non-sealed batteries because they can off gas um, and technically I mean it have to be pretty severe but they could uh, have you could have an explosion due to like I can't remember what gas they put off um, so I figure I'll talk about the setup here um, what I have in here we'll, we'll go back to the DC versus AC amp stuff later and what my issues are but what I have here is solar wiring coming from the 100 watt uh, eco worthy panel into a super cheap uh, PWM, which is pulse width modulation, I believe, charge controller, uh, and then this charge controller is in charge of charging the batteries adequately. Uh, you can do setup stuff inside this. It was really hard. I'd watch YouTube videos on it because this thing's like eight or nine bucks, and there's it's Chinese. There's no. It's very hard to understand. Um, this I got off surprisingly Walmart.com. Um, had the cheapest price for this. This is a Love Yuan, uh, also a 500 watt, 1200 watt surge inverter. Um, this converts your DC amps from your battery via those two leads there into AC up here. Uh, that was like 60 bucks, 70 bucks. I can't quite remember how much that was. Uh, it's too small uh, and the surge wattage is probably for like a millisecond, but um, very cheap. So uh, again, two free batteries and this Right here, monitors, I couldn't figure out a better way to mount this. Uh, this monitors um, draw via a shunt, which is right there. 
Uh, so currently right now we're drawing. So as you can see currently, sorry for the refreshing, uh, the current is 76 milliamps. The battery's voltage is at 14.3. That is being maintained by the uh, solar charge controller, the cheap one. But I got this so I could measure how much uh, power is being drawn. So if I turn on this light behind me, you can see the power jumps way up. Let me turn it up here. You can see we're now drawing almost an amp, 781 milliamps. If I turn it off, you can see it drops down right there. That's going to be that number. So I got that so I could monitor um, how much power draws. Sorry for the refreshing. Uh, nonetheless, these batteries are from 2017 and 2020, and they are toast. This right here is for a Peltier fridge that I got, and I got to make that better. But So, those batteries right there run this computer and this for about two hours. Now, I do have a laptop. The laptop uses a significant amount less than the desktop, um, but it has batteries in it, so it's kind of cheating, but same time that technically is being those are its batteries anyways so this setup here will power stuff like lights and small draws for a very long time um it'll it'll power all that stuff for quite some time as you can see you can see it just real rudimentary power coming in from solar panel batteries yeah um so right now i'm hooked into shore power on this thing so i can test stuff out and kind of you know my main issue is really being able to test um, and obviously discovering that uh, this these do not supply enough power. So, all in all, I have 20 amp hours of usable power with the batteries and a 100 watt solar panel, which isn't quite 100 watts when it gets really hot. It draws around in direct sunlight, 3.8 amps to 4 amps um, through a really, really cheap charge controller. I think all in, if I were to buy new batteries, I'd probably be in this around four to five hundred dollars. Uh, and new batteries would obviously last a long time. Uh, new batteries would be two Walmart batteries and they would last significantly longer than those there. Um, Walmart has deep cycle batteries that are so-so, uh, but for your normal weekend trips, um, it would probably work great. And, wow, that thing's really bent. Um, and if you had another couple panels, that the charge controller is only able to support 380 watts. I don't know if I'd put that much through it, um, but uh, with a couple more panels, you could be making some more power. And solar is obviously largely dependent on where you're parking. Uh, here in the Northwest, Pacific Northwest, your a lot of campsites are deep in the woods, so you're going to need some like power buildup. So it varies. Like maybe down in the desert, you could have less batteries and more panels, but up here you're gonna need probably more batteries and less panels because uh, you're gonna need that longevity of being able to like use the battery. Uh, now we're not drawing anything like an electric hot water heater or a microwave, things like that. Those things use a lot of power. They are very high usage. You have to have very high quality, decent inverters that can handle like surge watts that are crazy uh, another one's air conditioners air conditioners use a lot of dc amps <laughs> um but i want to kind of talk about dc versus ac amps again and kind of show you the uh the difference here and what my issues are so real quick what i'm going to do sorry for the refreshing just a short clip here i'm going to disconnect that and plug it in up here so i'm going to take this and plug it in up here like so I'm act what I'm actually gonna do. Wait a minute. Oh. Make sure you don't set stuff on positive and negative battery terminals here. Alrighty, so I went and looked on a piece of paper that I tested stuff. So this fan, supposedly when I tested it, uses half an amp when fully on. My computer setup uses 1.7 amps when in moderate use. I think that was like watching YouTube. So, as you can see, currently in DC amps, we are at 9.9. So currently in DC amps, we're at 989 milliamps. We're basically at an amp of usage. So if I turn this fan on, 
on high. We are using So now we're using three amps DC, so half an amp. So it was confusing for me because you're actually using half an amp AC is equal to like two amps DC, I guess. I don't know. Um, nonetheless, it uses a lot of power. My computer uses a significant amount of power. So if I turn this off, I turn my computer on which it didn't like something. Now, granted this computer, you're taking DC voltage, turning it into AC, and then turning it back into DC. Fantastic. Okay, so we have that on, and my computer screen on, and we're now using, and the fan is also off. We're using nine amps of power. Oh, we dropped down to six. We were using nine. This thing fluctuates quite a bit. So I believe the whole setup uses like one or two amps normally. So we're drawing a lot of uh, DC amps. This setup can only run that for about two to three hours before it's like lights flickering, computer shutting off. Stuff that's not good for the computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. As you can see, I can turn this off. That will shut down. And now the monitor is the only thing on. And you can see the monitor is using 1.5 amps because our normal amperage is 1 amp, just normal draw. So, yeah. I don't know what's using an amp. It's probably the phone charger because I think normally this does not use an amp. So I can go under here and turn the power brick off and I should actually unplug this and we'll see what it drops down to. So everything's unplugged here. This thing has the only thing that's powering is that. So we're down to 760 milliamps. So. so all of that being said, it's just not enough power. We're going to change that today. We're changing from 20 amp hours of usable power to 100 amp hours of usable power. And we're changing from 100 watts of solar to 300 watts of solar. Now, solar is not 100% efficient. The panels put out like 90 watts, you know, marketing, whatever. Um, but uh, we're, we're installing 300 watts of solar. That's what, you know, everyone on the internet says. So we're probably installing more like 280 watts-ish. Who knows, it could be more if it was cold out, panels overproduce. So I tested these panels just sitting out in the sun um, with nothing hooked up to them. I just hooked the multimeter to them. And because they were cool, cold, they were actually putting out 120 watts, so they were overproducing. Nonetheless, I'm gonna get all of that disconnected and unhooked, and then we will come back. I'm gonna have to redo stuff. These are six volt golf cart batteries. I'll show you those here in a minute. They're very big and very heavy. So, I have the 12 volt batteries in here wired in parallel, which is same voltage, double amperage. The six volt batteries are gonna be wired in series, so you're doubling voltage, amperage stays the same. So these batteries here um, are 12 volts, but the amperage doubles. So each one of those batteries would have probably like 20 amp hours of power. So that's 40 amp hours, but, cause, but because you can only discharge them to 50%, basically one of the batteries doesn't get used, even though they both do get used, but you get what I'm saying. 20 and 20 is 40, but you can only use half of the battery setup. Um, you could wire those in parallel and get 24 volts at 10 amp hours or 20 amp hours, something, 10 amp hours. Um, so the golf cart batteries are six volt, so they're going to be wired in series, which is going to make them 12 volt, but the amp hours will stay the same. The amp hours for these is 234 amp hours. We'll only be able to use half of that. So roughly hundred amp hours. These batteries are brand new. They took a very long time to charge. When I bought them, they were dead and I didn't realize it. They had, had no charge, but apparently they'd just been sitting like the guy hadn't used them. Um, apparently, the guy I bought them from was super nice, super cool. I uh, didn't have, I guess, couldn't use them because wasn't able to get solar power at his property that he had them on. I think that was what the story was. So uh, hopefully this will be putting out a lot more power. Um, the panels are probably gonna be putting out over 10 amps all the time into the PWM charge controller. I don't know what that equates to actually into the batteries, but 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna get this stuff unhooked, get the other stuff ready to go, and we'll swap everything over. I gotta put panels on the roof, which means I need to drill new holes, which I don't wanna do. Um, and I only have a splitter that's a two panel into one, so I'm actually leaving this run of wire in here, and I'm just gonna have the wires join up at the charge controller. It, it doesn't know any different. So it'll be two panels into one set of wires, and then one panel into one set of wires, basically. Like I said, the charge controller doesn't know any difference. It thinks it's all connected together. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get all this unhooked. Probably going to have to do some changing in there because those are post batteries. The ones I have now are actual deep cycle golf cart batteries equipped with uh, threaded posts for, like, solar stuff. So um, we're going to see if we can do this. All right, we are up here on the camper roof. Here is my 100-watt eco-worthy panel. It's a little dirty. Um, when you're doing stuff, you want to cover your panel up so it does not start generating electricity. It's not fully covered, but it'll do. So now that's covered, I'm going to get off this and get stuff disconnected. Okay, that's how much power we're generating, supposedly. Yeah, so we're generating basically nothing, so I can unhook that. Inside these, there's about a plate every 16th of an inch, and the other ones, who knows. These also weigh a lot more. Like a lot more. Ouch, mine. These have been charging for quite some time. They should be fully charged. According to online, fully charged is 6.44, but I don't know if that's float fully charged, because they kind of go down from that. At the same time, they hold a lot of amp hours, so really, who knows. I'll be able to tell when I get them hooked up and use them. Technically speaking, these should be able to run my desktop and m monitor for uh, a minimum of... 10 or a maximum of 10 hours so probably more like eight but we'll see i i don't know um they're heavy i'll tell you that They barely fit. This is the 70s AC to DC converter for shore power. Well, I'm telling you what. Um, so on these, you want to wire it. You want to go, uh, I believe, negative to positive, and then you do positive and negative. So these are 12 volt. This makes it 12 volt. Because if you were to just go positive to positive, negative to negative, like we had before, it would stay a six volt system. But the amp hours would jump up to uh, 460. But we gotta go 12 volt because everything's 12 volt here. Um, so you'd instead do, I, I gotta look it up, but you go negative to positive and that ties the battery together. So just imagine it going like 12 volt, go positive through all those, negative through all those, or through the wire, positive, through all those, and this is your 12 volts. My leads will work. I can't remember what gauge this is. It's either eight gauge, does it say on it? SAE made in the USA. Don't I have, what is it, where is it? Let me see if I can zoom it in a little bit. See how many are down inside there? See how they're like packed together? That's what gives it its uh, large capacity. I believe those 12 volt guys have nowhere near that amount. And the reason this comes off is because these are non-sealed, you have to check them um, because the fluid naturally evaporates. Okay, I'm gonna think I'm gonna move this down and check it again. There's the cheap $8 one, it's pretty lightweight. You can kind of tell it's pretty light. Uh, you have so you have your solar panel in, your battery out, and a load. You have two USB ports and a whole bunch of buttons that are really hard to use. Um, these things aren't super great. Uh, and then the PWM that came in the stuff I bought is a Renogy Adventure. You can see the 
size difference there. Um, supposedly this can handle 300 and, uh, well, it says max PV voltage 50 volts, rated current 30 amps, 390 watts, 12 volts, 400 watts, 12 volts. I'm not going to trust this with anything more than 200 watts, really, um, because there's obviously a size difference. Uh, the Adventure has one USB port, uh, has a whole bunch of stuff. Um, apparently, battery and PV was written on the back. This thing uh, separates. So you can see how much nicer this unit is here. Um, it's obviously very, very well built compared to this one here, which... So you can obviously see that the Renogy is a lot higher quality, of course. Um, this is $8. This thing's going to run you 40 to 50 probably, 60 um, This does, I do have a Bluetooth thing that will go to this, so I'll be able to use my phone. But uh, as you can see on here, it says PV plus and, and battery, positive and negative. Also has temp sensor and battery remote. I don't know what those are for, but... Uh, we're going to be using this in its simplest form. Snaps in like that. There. And then it will mount to the wall. So far in here, I just have the batteries hooked up. Um, I had to drill these bigger to be able to fill the, over those posts for this. Uh, I'm going to have to redo my... This whole area is going to become a battery box. So everything in here will be vented through that. I just serviced that little PC fan. It moves quite a bit of air, but uh, I was going to move this, but I realized that I 3M taped it on the back and duct taped it. So this is just going to stay here. Uh, the charge controller is going to go basically in the same spot. It's going to go here. Uh, and the reason I have all this stuff in the closet and not out in the open is because I don't like the lights. There's lots of lights and if you're camping or living on the road in this thing, you don't you don't want light shining in your face at all hours of the night, pardon me. Here is the shunt for this monitor. Uh, the monitor gets its power off the two posts under here, and then the reading. These go here and here and read across and read blah 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 and you get a reading. Yeah, the batteries are in and uh, jumpered in between there, so that's good to go. Solar panel layout's gonna be kind of weird. It's gonna be kind of strange. Doing this in the wind is not a great idea. For reference, this is how big a 100 watt panel is. 300 watt panels are like. When I tell you this has been a nightmare, I don't know if Renogy didn't take into account, or any solar company, that maybe these would be getting installed on older rigs. Um, their self-tappers don't work. Uh, the self-tappers, like the same size as the thread, they're meant for like real thick stuff, just stripped out in this, severely stripped out. Um, now there's a board here on this, so I was able to get those screwed in into wood, which they kind of started to strip out in the wood too, because they're self-tapping. Um, that style there started to hold, but as you can see, let's see how much force it takes to strip it out. I can strip it right out. So that just stripped drywall anchors. And now some of you might be saying, rib nuts, I don't have rib nuts on me. The rib nut gun we have is missing a bunch of stuff. It's not gonna work. These, I went and got them from, of all places, Ace, Adam, Ace Hardware. I do like Ace. I wish their prices were a little better. Some places, I'm sure, do have better prices, but that's up a little bit. These are 1 8 
excess metal drywall anchors, and I will show you them later. Um, they work fan. I mean, like, you gotta remember this is loose, but like, and I mean, that's like tight. Like, I tightened it like tight. Like, that's tight. <laughs> I don't want to hit it with this because these just break everything. Um, but yeah, that is amazing. I'm so, so happy with that. There's no way that is coming out. And I use the washer because the anchor. I'll show you it, it's kind of hard to explain, but I may have been able to get away with it without the washer, but I mean, that that is, that's fantastic. That's perfect. And I tried using these, but the issue with this style is they don't, I pulled this one out, that's why it's all mangled. They don't, they just spread apart. So if you can imagine it, the screw goes in and just spreads it like apart. If you don't know how these work, the screw goes in, which causes the plastic to swell. These are for drywall. These are technically for drywall. I, honestly, these should be double purpose for aluminum. Like that worked like as intended. That worked amazing. I am so happy with the way that worked. Obviously this is floppy now. This is not secured. That down there isn't secured, but that's amazing. Now, if these were to break somehow, like fatigue break, these up here are all in. So this panel would stay on. That panel is gonna have one there and one over there. Um, update on the tractor because I probably am going to begin this out this week. Uh, had it running great. I've been struggling with filming, y'all. I just got to be honest. I have, I've been struggling with filming. Um, we're going to get back into it though. I'm really miss filming. I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't even want to talk about it. I just want to keep moving forward. It's very hard to film stuff when you're like deep in the uh, diagnosis phase. So. I mean that's tight. That's like pretty like scary tight. I keep oh I'm probably stripping it. Did I strip it out? I'm worried now. No, nope, I didn't strip it. Wow, that's amazing. Look at that. I mean when y'all I'm like when I'm doing that, I'm like like that that thing's really really tight that one may snap off honestly probably over tighten that one um you can over tighten anything and like you pull up past the fatigue point and then it becomes weak you can see here since i don't have a propane fridge i just ran my solar wiring in there that's styrofoam to make that for winter time or summer be sealed and i just put the hat over it and it's sealed off so that worked great well, y'all, I'm gonna call it here for the night. That was very stressful and I was pretty put down by that, that sucked. Nonetheless, I'm gonna get off the roof, go have dinner and relax. It works. Drywall anchors work. I'll show you them here real quick, actually. Sorry about that, everybody. I realized why the lights were causing issues. I have the camera on manual mode. Here is the drywall anchor that I'm using. It is all metal. I am taking these little tabs here. Whoa. Those little metal tabs that would normally be pounded into drywall and folding them back on themselves to add thickness. And I'm also adding a washer. Just going like that. Which is perfect. Basically just a little nut on the end. I probably stripped that one out maybe, I don't know. You definitely don't want to over tighten these. I, I really was over tightening it for the camera. I probably shouldn't tighten it that much, but yeah, just got a whole bunch of those here. So now that it's proven tomorrow, I can put all these in, but you got to look for this head distance from here to here, because if it's too much, it will bottom out and be loose because this can only tighten so far. So there are kinds of these you can order online that I believe are for sheet metal but I mean I like doing stuff local and easy fix I believe these were 65 cents each and the washers were 15 and the drill bit was indeed 1964 all right everybody it has been a bit since I recorded it rained yesterday actually of all things 
right after I drilled a whole bunch of holes in the roof to put those um, drywall anchors in. Not super happy about having to drill in the roof because drilling is not, it's like irreversible, but can't do it any other way. So I suppose I could go, I mean, even if I went and got like mounting hardware, I would still have to drill holes in the roof. I'm just not a fan of like permanently altering vintage things, but this camper is pretty like not, it's my like creation to an extent. It's definitely not like a super nice camper. So it's nice for me. And some people are probably like, it's nice and it's okay. I mean, it's not horrible, but we have 300 watts of solar up there now. And the wiring in there is a mess. I do not know what I'm gonna do about it. There's no good spot in this camper cause it's from the seventies where there's like a good spot for me to do wiring. All of the walls, there's no like uh, blocking or anything in the wall. So I, maybe I could like block out off the wall, but then I would have to find the studs and it's a mess in here. We'll, we'll take a look at it. Um, it's a disaster, but it is what it is. So, I mean, you know, you look in the camera and it's not that bad, but uh, we got power. I'm actually running off of solar right now. Um, but what I did here is I have this here is positive from the two Renogy panels and positive from the Eco-worthy panel. And this is negative from the Renogy panel, two Renogy panels and negative from the Eco-worthy panel. And I just cut them extra long and stuck them up in here. They don't fit great. Um, and they're probably gonna pull out at some point. I think I may have to pull them off and solder them. Either that or I will end up getting another two to one splice and I'll be able to splice down and just have one run come in. But um, for now that should work. I'm not quite sure I'm gonna seal this because those definitely were off gassing when I very first hooked them up. Uh, I hooked the Renogy BT1 module in. I doubt Renogy will ever watch this, but if you guys could like make both of your apps better, I mean, the this is just like me getting on the uh, app store it's the worst reviews for an app I've ever seen. Like one star reviews. And the app has both of them. There's like a Renogy DC home app, which is their, I guess their newer application. And then there's their old Renogy Bluetooth app, which they just don't update anymore. Um, I wish they would update both of them. Like go through the, a couple, <laughs> I just, I don't know why you would abandon an app and then make another app that's like just as bad and has less customization I mean if you go and look on the app store their reviews are bad so um, and this Bluetooth module is on all the time I really wish this had a off button I do not want Bluetooth in this camper all the time because you have to remember this camper is like a giant like the Bluetooth in here it doesn't escape it can only escape really through the windows because it's a giant aluminum can huh so anything that's on in here is just like constantly on but you know I believe that that kind of stuff's probably not too great for you. You know, it wasn't intended to have a Bluetooth signal 24 seven, seven days a week, uh, constantly blaring. And of course you can't unhook it under here because it's behind, it'd be cool if it was here. I can smell the batteries right now, actually, kinda. Um, that little fan makes noise, I'm gonna have to redo that. I think what I'm gonna do for this is take that and modify it and cut a channel out around all this because that's the only way I can do it. I don't want to read. Okay, I just lost a lot of footage. This SD card just stopped working. It like, I don't even want to talk about it. Okay, so, where did I leave off? Uh, technically right now we are running 100% off solar. That and that are turned on. Uh, something I noticed between these two batteries and those two starting batteries, when I would power my computer on, the voltage drop was crazy. I'm talking like 13 down to like 12.4, 12.3. It would have a huge sag in the voltage. I turned the power on from these. It didn't even sink uh, 0.1 of a volt. It like went from 13.8 to like 13.7 and then back up to 13.8. And as you can see, we're drawing 6.8 or 6.3 DC amps. That's my computer, my monitor, and my phone charger, which isn't charging, but it still is consuming power. And that thing also is consuming power. 
Uh, I thought this was broke. Um, the, it's a mess. I forgot. I completely didn't even. So I completely forgot. Uh, oh no, I did film. The the that card has stuff on it. Never mind. Okay. I thought that I lost the vid footage of me talking. I thought that my solar panels are broke because I got up this morning, this morning, and uh, the Renogy app was showing that I was pulling in 20 watts of solar and an amp, and I'm like, 20 watts out of 300, and it's clear blue sky. I'm like, oh, something's wrong. Well, it was just that the batteries were full, and the charge controller in there, the adventure, was just, I guess, re rejecting charge from the panel, which is what it's supposed to do. I, I'm, I guess it's supposed to, once the batteries are in a float mode, it's not gonna push more power because it'd boil the batteries over. Nonetheless, technically right now, I'll log in here. So this is the Renogy BT app, which is under a different thing on the app store. I guess they're both Renogy's apps, I think. But one of them, this one is outdated and the other one's up, not outdated, but they both have like 1.7 star overall review. I find it, this is just my opinion, I find it really weird that a company in 2024 would not have their app up to snuff. Like, it's probably the most simple thing in terms of everything to have, like, in really good condition. Like, there's lots of app developers out there. There's lots of people that know what they're doing. Re-update this app. This app needs some things, minor things, because who cares if it's an old app? People still use it. And the poor experience they have on it makes the view of the company poor. So it doesn't matter that it's an outdated app. You should still like make sure it operates at the bare minimum of what people want. One of the complaints is that it doesn't auto connect. You have to like make sure. And one thing I don't like, you have to have your location and your Bluetooth on. Well, why do I have to have my location on? I, I know for a fact this thing does not need my location turned on to access Bluetooth. I don't like that. That's really weird. Um, it's very, that's very strange. <laughs> uh, it will just straight up, the app will not work. It'll be like, we need to turn your location on, go to your permissions. Uh, but you have to have those two things turn on. And then you go up here to this plus symbol and you click add device and the module that's in there shows up on here and then it'll say connecting. But this morning it was showing one amp and 20 Watts. Now you can see that because I've pulled a demand with the, uh, desktop tower and the monitor uh, all of a sudden the charge controller is allowing more flow to the batteries uh, apparently because the batteries need it um, yeah so like you can see right there it says 13.8 with the other batteries this would be like 12.4 right now because of the draw now I'm not sure how it's able to measure current on the battery 8.8 .8 amps um, I'm actually not sure how it's measuring that. So the solar panels currently are pulling in 6.94 amps. Uh, the, the charge controller is allowing 6.94 amps in from the solar panels. And you can see right now we are using 6.439, 6.42. That's that number right there. Um, and that number is that fan, that inverter, that desktop tower, and that monitor and a phone charger that's not plugged into anything. So what I wanna do, or what I wanna test here is, is that is this the max power that is actually coming in or is this being limited? So what we're gonna do is turn this fan on. This fan is gonna add some more amps to the system. This fan's a little old. So we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna watch this. Sorry, you guys can tell you that's loud. Let's see if this jumps. Oh yeah, look at that. So it's allowing more amperage in. So there is plenty of power. So we are now drawing 10.4 amps in. I don't know what the current deal is. It says 11, 10. But we're drawing 10.4 amps and we're using 8.89. Now I'm gonna trust this over this because this is actually running off a 100 amp shunt. So like that 
is way more accurate. This, so you have fan, uh, ground to the camper 12 volt and inverter ground and it's actually measuring across that so i'm gonna probably trust this more at the very least we know we're somewhere in between 8.5 ish and what this thing says which is 12 10 so um i'm pretty impressed voltage is not changing at all it's actually going up which is amazing. So technically, we're 100% on solar right now with a fan, a desktop, a monitor. I mean, this is, I'm pretty impressed. Like, this is pretty legit. Side note. I got this super sweet Sears um, battery charger. This thing's awesome. I just want to show you guys that got it for, for 15 bucks at a local uh, secondhand store. Uh, I'd say pretty good deal for 15 bucks. Super, super happy that I got that thing. I like old stuff like this. And let's see up here. One of these is pretty dirty, but you can see them up there and right here. This panel's the one that's nasty. Uh, it did rain, so I had to like like super fast silicone there's two the two on this side over here are not attached you can see where I have the solar coming in under here so I don't have to drill even more holes in the roof <laughs> that it really matters um, but I also got some new roof vents because those are smoked let's see if I can get down off here without hurting myself it's on these batteries it says uh, 232 for the uh, amp hour usage but I'm gonna go under that. I mean, I, it could be, even if it was 110, you're getting an extra hour, so I could run these, I could run a 10 amp load for 11 hours, supposedly. So far, I'm buying it. I mean, I, I'm, I am shocked that the battery, I mean, 13.6 is the lowest, is the lowest I'm seeing so far. Um, and I'm impressed. So that is not accurate. That is accurate. That's um, wattage from the pan or volts from the panel. That's amps from the panel. Uh, let's see. That's power generated so far, I guess. And that's battery voltage. So I have three spots to monitor battery voltage. I have there, there, technically with a multimeter. And I also have my phone. Alrighty, I'm re outroing this video because I didn't like the outro. If the video is kind of odd, if the editing is kind of weird, it's because I'm using a new editing software. Um, and I also haven't edited it in a while. A whole bunch of different things. I rambled on a whole bunch after that clip where you saw me talking about the voltage on the adventure. Um, I do want to touch on a couple things. Uh, the Renogy stuff obviously is good quality. I don't, I'm not trying to like bash on Renogy. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Uh, or affiliated with anybody, but I do like to try to give companies the benefit of the doubt um, You know, you never know with companies. Maybe they got a bad app developer and they like Haven't really seen the value in Making sure the app is in good quality. I think that's a lot of I think that businesses overlook that type of stuff a lot because whether or not you care if the app is up to date or not if it's old or even if it's new, I think I said this, it still gives a bad impression on the company as a whole. Like it doesn't really matter if it's old, it's still, you, you know, it's common sense. Like you don't want your name to be associated with junk. And Renogy is definitely not. The panels are really nice. Like I, they're, dare I say, <laughs> nicer than the eco-worthy panel, quite a bit nicer. They're definitely more expensive, but they're heavier bigger panel size. They just look nicer all around. They're not the squares like the Eco-Worthy is, they're rectangles. Um, all that being said, their products, I who knows where they're sourced from, uh, I'm happy with them. The Adventure, the quality of it's nice, the plastic's nice quality, the buttons are pretty decent, the display's nice. Like, it's good quality for what I'm used to and I got it second hand. And the panels are also good quality. The app definitely could use some improvement, both of them. 
but uh, yeah, I just rambled on about like weekend warrior versus living in the camper. Or, like obviously if you're, and I'll just wrap it up here real quick. If you're like going camping in your camper, you don't need two six volt golf cart batteries unless you're doing like five day plus trips with no power. And then you're gonna want even more solar um, and you know, you, it's highly dependent on like where you parked. There's a lot of factors that go into play. If you're just like out camping for like three days, two deep cycle batteries from Walmart or anywhere are gonna do you just fine. Like even one deep cycle battery for like running a television for maybe an hour or two or running lights or a heater, like a space, or not a space heater, but like a uh, propane heater, like the one in the camper uses Mm, almost two amps DC so it's not like a ton of draw stuff anyways I just wanted to say that you don't have to have this super gnarly setup if you're just like going camping every once in a while and you want a good solar setup uh, I would recommend a minimum of probably two solar panels one panel just doesn't quite do it, it, it you you can do it but it has to be in the Sun like all the time um, so yeah other than that uh, sorry this video was all over sorry it was a lot of me talking if you want to see stuff or have questions um, feel free to ask them down in the comments by the way I want to say this I am NOT an electrical expert I'm not a solar expert I'm not a battery expert I'm not an expert in anything <laughs> this is just my opinion my journey my setup I know that it needs some breakers and stuff and I'm well aware that you know things can happen and I'm gonna get some stuff set up hopefully I don't, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with that area it's a mess I'm not I'm not sure I don't know I gotta think about it and look at it but um, yeah I, I wish I could have shown more but it was kind of all I wanted to show was like upgrading the solar and um, like what it could do versus what it originally could do and kind of my problems uh, but other than that I hope the Lord's watching over all you out there definitely been watching over me sorry I have not been filming I have been filming but I've also been in the trenches as I set up on the roof I have been diagnosing the tractor has been giving me issues the, the there's another project that's been giving me issues there's a project behind this tree that I haven't even started yet it's another huge project there's all kinds of stuff there's lawnmowers that I was gonna film a Montgomery Wards and a McLean Edger I can't, the Montgomery Ward doesn't exist. There's no parts diagrams. There's no parts. The deck's shot. I'm gonna have to like send it. That video is garbage. The McLean Edger, the VacuJet carburetors worn out and they don't make VacuJet carburetors. They make PulsaJet carburetors. So I guess I could upgrade it, but then I would have to upgrade the gas tank because it needs a second, second hole in it. it, it <laughs> it's a mess. Anyways, um, sorry I have not been uploading. Um, I'm gonna upload this along with another video. You can go over to the channel and check it out. It is a boot review on uh, some thorough good boots that I got as a present because my other boots wore out and I just figured why not film a video on it. Uh, so yeah, other than that, hope the Lord's watching over all you and I'll catch you in the next one. God bless. Thank you for watching. Alrighty everybody, the verses today I got for you are Romans 8, 5 through 8. Read this. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. We'll read uh, 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. In fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is, lo is lo life because of righteousness. So, he goes on to talk about that. But So, hope that bless you. Catch you in the next one.